And we welcome you into RadfordAthletics.com. I'm Rick Watson, and of course today a very special day here at Radford University because our first NBA player from Radford University, <laughs> Javante Green, back visiting as we retire his number in the rafters. Good to see you. Well, you look great, by the way. You too, Rick. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> well, let's talk about your journey. Um, coming out of high school, I uh, believe one scholarship offer. You wanted to play basketball. People may not know this, though. You were a terrific football player, and I know that's something you still hold dear to your heart. Yeah, um, you know, football was my first love. So, uh, but that's, 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 that's behind us now, you know, just getting that one scholarship here at Rafford, you know, and then just just trying to uh, extend my career here. So and it turned out to be a great one, you know. What did it mean for you going back? You look back at those times, I'm sure now, you're 17, 18 years old, to have somebody like Mike Jones and his staff believe in you to come in mm -hmm. here and say, this is what we want you to do because we know what you could potentially be, not only as a player, but also as a student. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I ain't going to say that. That's the first thing Jones ever told me, but he had, he did have, he has told me that, you know, I have so much potential, you know, I could be really good. And, you know, being a young kid, you don't, you don't believe that until, you know, just put the work in and then you see how good you're becoming. So that, that, was, a, that was a blessing for him and uh, the coaching staff that was here to have that, that trust in me and um, put me out there and make me get better. What was the biggest adjustment looking back coming out of high school to getting used to college life as a student athlete? Because you're not necessarily normal students having yeah. to take on that double workload. Um, you know, it was, it was tough. You know, to, to come out of high school, you know, you know, you really ain't have no worries, you know, you gotta have to worry about doing laundry, stuff like that. So you didn't have that, that extra load on you on top of schoolwork and playing sports. So coming to college, it was, it was kind of, it was a, it was an adjustment, but as the time go on, you know, you get, a, you get adjusted to it and, um, you know, you just got that, that family people that help you, the coaches and stuff like that around the community. Do you remember looking back who were some of the first teammates you really bonded with here at Radford University? Um, yeah, of course, you know, the movement. The movement, that's yeah. right. Uh, you know, we came here together, you know, uh, me, RJ, Jalen, Brandon, uh, Cal Noreen. You know, we just came in here, we came in together, you know, we, we left together, you know, Brandon, he redshirted, so he left the year after. But, you know, uh, we still, we still in um, huge communication, right. stuff like that. So. I, was, I really say them guys for real. And then all the other guys that came um, after, you know, with Sean, Yaya, Justin, you know, just to name a few. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's a brotherhood, you know, we still keep in contact, you know, we still, we still talk to this day. I still have my movement t-shirt you guys yeah. made, as a matter of fact. Well, that was so important though, because Mike Jones was starting, he needed to build a foundation here, and you were part of that. Yeah. And as this thing continues to go forward, I know you still take some pride in that, don't you? Because you were there, you were part of that big building block mm -hmm. class that you just mentioned. Yeah, I mean, you know, everybody came in together. You know, we, and then we just, my freshman year, freshman, sophomore year, we were just trying to figure it out, you know. And, and as, as my career, and as our career went on, the, the four years, you know, we just tried to get better, and which we did each year. So, I mean, it was, a, it was a great, great four years. Exciting four years, yeah. I asked you a question earlier, uh, what Coach Jones stayed on you about the most? <laughs> Your answer was interesting. Uh, he just was on me about staying in the stance, you know. Um, but, you know, you, you want, he just wanted the best for everybody. So, you know, I, I feel like at the time I felt like he was just picking, but, but all, that, all the little things matter. As you, as you grow older, you can see why. You've always worked so hard. Um, I used to see it myself every day here. Mm -hmm. And the commitment that you had not only get better for yourself, but also for your team. And then, of course, when you left Rafford, you carried that through, didn't you? You had that determination, regardless of where you ended up, wherever you're playing, to make sure you got yeah. to be the ultimate guy you could be. Yeah, I mean, like I said, Coach Jones, Coach Jones, Coach Byers does a huge part in that. You know, they just, uh, just, just put this in my ear that just try to get better each day. You know, and, um, you know, that, and, that, and that's just stuck with me. To, uh, to this day, just try to get better. But, um, you know, I, I don't know what to say about that. Just, I mean, like, I just, just try to get better, honestly. If, we, if you don't get better, then I ain't gonna say you failed today, but you really wasted the day. You had so much success overseas. Um, what kept you going there waiting for that call when you finally got the call from Boston that you were gonna be on their basketball team? Um, that's, that's, I, I say my kids, that's motivation to get back get back home to them, get close to them, you know, um, you know, just, you know, being overseas, 
for them four years, it was it was it was kind of tough, like being over there by yourself. Uh, and just wanted just wanted to be close to my family, you know. And I just I just tried to work hard on doing that, and just you know it wasn't like an ultimate goal, but to to work hard and see I would just kept punching, kept kept scratching right. the surface, seeing how close I was. Yeah, finally I broke through, so it was just a blessing. You broke through. You're in your city with the, the the organization who believed in you first, and then all of a sudden you get moved to Chicago. Take us through that process, if you could. I mean, how did that affect you? And was it something that ended up maybe you thought was a bigger deal than it ended up being once you made that move? Um, nah, I just felt like when it happened, it was a. Uh, of course, it was a surprise. I didn't thought, think I was going to get traded or whatever, but understand understanding the reason why you know uh, they did any did that, but. I'm just I'm just happy to be where I'm at now, you know, um, getting the opportunity to showcase my talent in Chicago. So, I mean, I just feel like it was a blessing in disguise, you know, to that trade. Even though, you know, I made a made like a second home or third home in in, um, in Boston, just trying to figure it yeah. out now. Um, you know, it's just, it's fine now, you know, um, being, in, being in Chicago, figuring it out now. And so many guys are gonna hear your story and use you as that inspiration, the one mm -hmm. scholarship offer. The work, right? And mm. now you're starting for the Chicago Bulls. I mean, yeah. it's just, it is an amazing journey. Do you ever just look back and go, wow, I'm here? Or do you go, you know what? I've, I've earned this. I've worked for this. Uh, I feel like it's a it's a mix of both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but some days you still, you st I still wake up and like, yo, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm in the NBA. Like, I mean, this, this is your, this is your dream since you was a kid. And then you're here. And then like, I ain't gonna say I'm taking, I ain't gonna take it for granted, but you know, just sometimes I sit back and soak it all in, you know, and just just thank God for every every blessing he brings. Coming back today, finally now, to see that number two go up there at the top of the Dedman Center, Coach Jones, Coach Byers, all your former coaches, mm -hmm. your teammates coming to celebrate your family. Yeah. Where does this sit? I mean, this has to be a very special memory for you. Yeah, I mean, it's probably, you know, other than my, kid, my kid's birth, it's probably up there, you know, um, probably – you know, up there with making a roster as well, NBA roster. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it's a very special moment for me, you know. Um, just coming here like a, a small town kid, you know, uh, getting a Division One offer and leaving his mark here at Rapper University, you know, uh, getting his jersey retired, man. I mean, you don't hear you don't hear that much. So I just feel like it's a it's a blessing, man, just to be here. I just I just wanna thank Jones Lindenberg. Everybody that had had that supported me to, to had that support, had that trust in me to be to come out here and be the best player I can be. So that's a special moment for me. Well, and it's very special for all of us here at Raptor University, man. I've known you a long time, and I still remember your last game up at Vermont mm -hmm. when the, uh, the crowd there stood and gave you a standing ovation, and you took a little bow because you were the best player on the floor, and you've continued that on now, not only on the court, but how you live your life off the court, man. I'm so proud of you and so happy for everything you've accomplished, man. Yeah, appreciate you. All right, that's Javante Green, folks, of the Chicago Bulls coming back as his jersey is going to be hung up in the Dedman Center Raptors here today.